Okay, thank you for joining me. I'm sorry I'm three minutes late. My name is Marna Wright. I'm the OT Marna, and this is the third. You're joining me for the third in a four-part series on um, compression on um, stocking aids, um, piece of adaptive equipment to help people put socks on their feet. So there are all kinds of sock aids. We've talked about the basic kind of a sock aid the first week the uh, softer, less rigid trifold sock aid the third, second week. Oh my God. <laughs> In this third week, we're going to talk about the compression stocking sock aid. So I apologize. I'm a little bit flustered. I thought I had time to go to the grocery store this morning. And of course, hmm, I'm running late. And if you hear any noises in the background, that's baby A or baby B putting away groceries for me um, because I kind of pulled into the driveway, opened the door and said, put them away, I gotta start this video. So if this is the first time you're joining me, welcome. Um, I'm an occupational therapist. I work in home health, in the home health setting. I meet people in their homes when they've been referred for home health services by a doctor or if they've been discharged from the hospital or discharged from a rehab. And I work with them, I come to their home, we do an evaluation visit and then we may or may not um, set up some goals, and if we do set up goals, I come back and meet with them one-on-one -on -one in their home. Um, so I thought, why not start putting these little videos together once a week to give you some of the information I have, just a little bit of the information I have that might help you if you're never gonna be referred to home health services, and I'm happy about that if you're not, how you can do some basic things to make life a little easier, a little safer, and a little more independent. I always have something I say to my clients, safety equals independence. If you are being safe, you will remain independent. Um, sometimes independence, when it's impulsive, leads to decreased safety and decreased independence. But if you're safe, you're always independent. So yes, again, this is the third video of the uh, OT Marna series, Sock Aids. So this is Sock Aids 301. So if you've been with me for one or two of the videos already, you learned a lot. You've already learned what a sock aid is. It's a piece of adaptive equipment that helps you put a sock on your foot. You've learned who might benefit from using a sock aid. Generally, people who cannot bend over for whatever condition they have. They might have had recent surgery again and be on hip precautions. They might be having pneumonia or COPD and it's really difficult for them to bend down and then come back up because it makes them very fatigued. They might just have chronic pain. So there are a lot of conditions that people might have that might help them with a sock aid, but you already know that. You know how to use a sock aid at this point. You've probably seen me do it, I don't know, about five or six times. Probably more than that. And you know that there are different kinds of sock aids. There's the standard, rigid plastic, who we will never see again. There's going to be one more video next week. It's just a DIY video on how to make your own out of like a, uh, a bottle container, an empty bottle container. So we're not going to see this guy again. <laughs> I know I say that every week and then I pull him back. But I have uh, met somebody who needs this. So I'm going to be this week um, using it with them and giving it to them. So this is the, the, the last time we'll see this guy. The standard one, $9 to $10 online. Just make sure you read the reviews, $9 to $19. They have the rope. You can adjust the length of the rope. They have those nice soft cushions. If your foot gets stuck in it, put a little talc on your foot. The angle of your foot is going to matter for this one. Um, and that you pull the ropes together at the same time. So that's him again. Um, you know how to, I'm going to try to stop saying um now. You know that if, oh, again, this is generally four and a half inches wide. Measure your foot first. If your foot's wider than that, they do have wide, hard, plastic, rigid sock aids. If you don't have the hand strength to pull a sock over the end, you can get this soft trifold kind that also is a lot more forgiving to your foot size. If, you're, if your foot's wide, this guy's a lot more forgiving to that. Has generally a satin lining. Um, mm, I did it. <laughs> it has those straps that can be less comfortable to hold 
on to. So last week in SOC A201, we did a low-tech adaptation with some pipe insulator that I got at a local hardware store. You can do this too, and made little soft cushion handles for our SOC A. But besides that, the technique is exactly the same. You stabilize the SOC A between your knee, you put the sock on, all the way so that the toe box is flat, pull it up all the way, but um, give yourself enough room to get your foot in. Open this one up a little bit because it is softer. Drop it on the foot, go fishing for your foot. Last time we'll say that. Put your toe in, pull them up evenly at the same time and your sock will come on. All right, so that's this guy. Oh, you can buy them online or also in um, an adaptive or durable medical equipment store. Generally, these are a little bit more expensive. You can get them for 15 to 25 dollars. I wouldn't pay more than that for any brand. Um, in a store, you're going to pay a little bit more. Remember that, but you have the benefit of getting it immediately. If you're on your way home from surgery and your spouse runs in and grabs it because uh, you're going to need it, and you might get a little bit of education from the people who work or own the store. They might be able to provide you a little bit of education if you remember bits and pieces of this video, but not the whole thing. So that's the benefits of that. This week, we're gonna talk about compression stockings. Now, compression stockings are a whole nother animal. People who have been prescribed pres um, compression stockings, and it is a prescription. They come in prescriptive strength of pounds of pressure per inch. They, some can be light compression stockings and some can be really heavy compression stockings. The sock aid or compression stocking aid that I am going to show you this week is primarily for feet, but uh, women, sometimes when they've had a mastectomy or for various other medical reasons, men or women can have lymphedema in various parts of their body, in their arms as well as their and they can be prescribed compression gloves, compression arm sleeves, and compression stockings. And there are other pieces of equipment online that might be easier to put on an arm sleeve than the one that I'm going to show you. But the one I'm going to show you is really good continuing with this theme if you have some physical limitations and putting on a compression stocking. This is certainly not the only game in town. Again, it's true form, leg health, stocking donner came with some nice little instructions not of all all I'm thrilled with because I do encourage you to stand and I'm all about safety before independence and there's no need for you to stand with this uh, but there are other kinds easy as if you go to easyas.com those are they come in different widths they're plastic and different colors they're shorter they are only come up as high as this part really and what you do is the same technique, so I'll show you the technique, the same technique, but you have to bend down a little bit more to pull it up your leg, which isn't the end of the world for some people who do not have back pain, who are not on hip precautions, and who do not have a condition that would make them have low tolerance for uh, endurance. So, but keeping with the theme of you might have hip surgery, and sometimes, often, when you have hip surgery, the surgeon will prescribe compression stocking on the affected side for a certain amount of time until they decide that you no longer need it. So keeping with that theme or if you have compression stockings for congestive heart failure and you're really fatigued because of congestive heart failure, um, the long handles, I wanted to keep with that theme. Okay, so oh, the, I just wanted to review again. This was the uh, um, pipe insulator that I bought from a hardware store and I just cut the pieces to adapt these handles okay and that's in 201 that's in OT Marna 201 sock aids if you want to see the technique for that and for we're gonna say goodbye to my little foam adaptation low-tech thing that I made to put the compress the sock aids that you have to slide your foot in at the correct angle because we're not going to need that for today but this is something you can do too or you can use a pillow when you go fishing for your foot. Make sure it lands on a pillow before you put your foot in. Your foot's at a really good angle to help the sock clear your heel. All right, all that, all that. So I 
I do not have compression stockings because they're very expensive and OT Marna works on a budget. But I did buy these $1.99 faux compression stockings, which I, I felt kind of bad about until I saw that that was the same kind that they demonstrated with in here, so now I'm kind of okay with that. Um, compression stockings are generally super stiff. Generally, they come up and should fit two inches below the back of your knee, generally. Some of them are higher. Some of them, like we've already said, are sleeves. Yours, if they're general for surgery or congestive heart failure, typically will be whatever strength the doctor has prescribed, but they should come up to two inches below the back of your knee. They can be very difficult if you have decreased hand strength to open, let alone bend down, let alone pull up your leg because the whole thing is compressed, not just the top part like a standard sock. The whole stocking, compression stocking is compressed. So say you're able to get the opening over your toe, pulling it up is gonna be <laughs> very difficult. Often people will have assistance donning compression stockings if they've been prescribed them. Often they will. So if you're living alone and you don't receive any services like PCA assistance and you don't have a home health aid, really a compression stocking um, sock aid is going to be a huge benefit to you. Now what you will need is the same physical abilities that anybody else using any other sock aid will need. You'll need the ability to sit upright. You'll need pretty good vision especially if you buy a white one, and most compression stockings are white. You'll need some fine motor control, some hand dexterity, the ability to move your arms, and some visual cognitive and straight up cognitive capacity. So you, you need to be able to dress other parts of your body and the spatial awareness to find your way around, around the room. So the technique is, is pretty much the same to start it. You pick it up on your lap or on a table in front of you. That's fine too, but I, I don't want to put a table in front of me, so I'm going to be doing my lap. You hold your compression stocking so that the heel is towards you. The heel is towards you. And the open part here, the open part is towards you. Now, that other kind I mentioned, the um, Easy As, they're slanted, and the high slant is in the back towards you. So it's slanted, the high slant is in the back towards you. You open up your compression stocking and you put the heel towards you. Start it in the back and you slide it down. Now, this part is not too difficult, but once you get the top part over, because these compression stocking sock aids, they really hold um, a, a compression stocking open very wide because people who have Compression stockings often have edema and bigger feet, so they really open them wide. So if you can get it on, but then you struggle, which a lot of people do, um, remember the flat hand technique, okay? The flat hand technique can work with you, or um, they sell such a thing as, believe it or not, a compression stocking sock aid gloves. So those are gloves that are sold for about nine to twenty dollars online that are cotton gloves that are dipped in um i think it's a latex but it's a it's a, a something that has low friction so that it will really stick and you can you can use the open palm technique to bring that all the way down a little ot marna trick which i will tell just to you is you could go to the dollar store or the grocery store and get the gloves that you use to wash your dishes in the sink. Those gloves that we all use so that our hands stay nice, <laughs> or at least we don't burn. That has the same kind of um, non-slip surface that will help. Um, because I work in home health, I almost always have latex gloves. And I have worked with people when they have nothing else, just given them two, pair, two of my gloves and had them don those and it can really help. You just get more of a grip, you just do. This will also, these gloves, whichever you choose, the nine to $20 ones, the $1.99 ones, or these, which I don't even think you can buy a box of them for $2 and use them until they're used up. They're used both for the sock aid and when you get the compression stocking on your leg to help smooth it because it's 
they often compression stockings, you'll pull them up so far and there are wrinkles. There are wrinkles that are really hard to pull out, so you smooth them with the palm of your hand. So here we are. Okay, I know I've gone off task. You bring the whole sock down. Now, the trick is with compression stockings, any compression stockings, to keep the hole where your foot's going to go far enough forward because it tends to want to roll up on that heel a lot. So I'm going to pull it forward. I've got it all the way on. And I'm going to pull it forward a little bit. There's my toe box. Now, what's very different with the compression stocking sock aid is, you know how I kept telling you, make sure that sock is, the toe box is flat when you pull the sock on the socking knee. Because this is a reverse direction, I, I guess we're making it inside out almost, you want to have something there for your toes to land in. So you want to have a little pocket there. You want a little pocket. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, for your toes to fit in and not be not have the sock be totally flat across or or an angle is what it would be so I pulled it up as far as I can I brought that toe box a little forward I'm using my palm action this you know this takes a little bit of a technique rolling it forward there okay now I'm going to place this on the floor at an angle I hope you can see that I'm going to put my toe in and I push my foot down, and as I push my foot down, I pull up the sock aid. Tip it forward, it releases the compression stocking. I just realizing I should not have worn a dress, so I'm going to be checking this a lot, I'm sorry. And that's on your foot. And it's, even though I left a little bit of a pocket at the end, my toes are right at the end. So let's do that again. Let's do that again. I'm going to pick it up, and I didn't have to stand up, like the picture says. Don't stand up, okay? Don't stand up to bend forward to pull something up. It's If you have any already uh, risk for personal risk, fall risk factors, like you're on poly medication, or you get a little dizzy, or you get orthostatic hypotension, it's really going to put you at risk for falls. So you open it up, the heel the heel, which on a, I keep saying that and pointing here because on a compression stocking, they do look like the standard side of the foot that's been cut out. So you do very easily see the heel and the toe. There's something else about compression stockings that I want to tell you in a minute. So remind me after I'm done with this. Thanks. Okay. We're going to open this up. I started at the top, start using my palms. Bring it down. You can use your fingers too a little bit, but it's just so much easier. It really is just so much easier. Oh, that went on crooked, so that's okay. I'm moving it sideways a little bit. I could tell it went on crooked because <laughs> these compression stockings have a line across the toe. I'm bringing that toe box forward a little bit, so I have a little bit of a target. I'm going to put this on the floor in front of my foot. I'm going to put my toes in, push my foot down, pull it up. Now at this point, you could drop it. Um, you will probably have, your socket will probably look like this. It'll probably have some, I can't really mimic it, but it'll probably have some wrinkles. So if, if you can grab the end, pull it up to it's two inches below the back of your knee. I probably have that a little high. There we go. Two inches below the back of your knee. There. And then you're going to smooth, use these gloves to smooth it out, up and down, up and down, not just, not just pulling it up. Whatever way you have to, just smooth out those wrinkles on the compression stockings because then you're going to have irregularities in the amount of pressure that the sock is exerting over that part of your leg, which for the best effect, you shouldn't have. So it's nice and smooth and flat at the top. Don't let it roll down. Don't roll it down. If you've pulled it up too high and you think, oh, that's too high, I don't want to roll it down, you're going to have a ring. You're going to have a ring around your leg by the end of the day. Don't do that. Keep it flat. Two inches below the back of my knee, approximately. There we go. And now I want to smooth it out with my compression stocking donning gloves or my dishwashing gloves or my non-latex vinyl gloves. These are not latex or vinyl and smooth it up and down and smooth it up and down. Very good. Now, if you did that with me, excellent job. I'm 
I'm going to take these off now because my hands are getting all sweaty. But the good thing about these is you can roll them off. What's that? <laughs> sweaty palm stuff dry out. Next time you use it, just wear it like that. You don't have to turn them inside out. They're reversible. And they're probably one of your least expensive options. Oh, the other thing, thank you for reminding me. The other thing I wanted to tell you about the compression stockings are they generally have a hole in the bottom of the foot right here. And um, that is to help people put them on. Because say you think, yeah, I'm on a budget, I, I can't afford this. Because this was, this was $30. Compression stocking sockets are the most expensive. Really any kind. I did see one loose kind, which was even more expensive. It's sort of a bag with handles and you put, put it, put your foot in that and then you start the compression stocking and then you roll it, roll it, roll it so it rolls up and then you roll it, roll it. just seemed like too many steps to me. That was a little less expensive, but either these wire rigid frame or the plastic rigid frame, which come in different sizes and they're the same price no matter what size. They both are more expensive. They're gonna be up to $50. So they're gonna be $29.95 to up to $50. But say, you know, you don't have that, but you do have somebody who can help you, but they don't have great hand strength either. A tried and true technique is to do the old powder on the leg, cornstarch or baby powder, just be careful not to breathe it. Put a plastic bag on first, like a, uh, one that Big Y no longer uses as of August 1st. A little old fashioned grocery bag or bread bag, that would work too. Put it on your leg, make sure your leg's really dry for this or it won't work, and put it on loosely. Then the person who's helping you, or if you can bend down and pull it up yourself, your sock will slide up most of the way um, over the bag. Once it's clear your heel, then reach through that hole in the bottom of the compression stocking and pull the bag out, slide the bag out. It may, if you're alone, this is going to be tricky. So this is more of a technique if somebody's helping you with it. But that is another technique, adaptive technique, not adaptive equipment, but adaptive technique for putting on a compression stocking or help, helping someone put on a compression stocking. So I'm going to take one off and we're going to review. The compression stockings coming off, generally you roll them down, roll them down, roll them down, roll them down, get it over your heel and start again. All right, so I'm going to find my heel, and I guess that's my heel now because it was my heel last time. I'm going to bring this up to either my lap or table directly in front of me. From this side, start the heel, flat palm, I have my gloves on still, flat palm, flat palm, flat palm, down here you can pull this down. Make sure my toe box has room for my toes and is far enough away from me. That's what I keep trying to, to demonstrate. When you put these on, they tend to want to roll back. So far enough away from me that I can get my toe in there. Hold it with two hands. Drop it on the floor. My toe is in. I'm pulling, 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 pulling. Then tip it forward to release my foot. Tip it forward uh, to release the stocking. Once the stocking is up as high as I want it, Tip it forward, that releases a stock. Get it under your foot. Put your gloves on. I feel like I'm going into surgery here. All right. Two inches below my knee, below the back of my knee. Because two inches below my knee is, is here, but below the back of the knee. Take the flats of your palms, smooth it out. And this is even working with these. Smooth it out, smooth it out. Oh, you know what? This side is slipperier. So forget what I said about flipping these inside out. This side is slipperier. The outside was much better for doing that. So go back three minutes and change. I changed my mind about that. And I knew that too, and I forgot it. Yeah, much better. Grip, and it smooths out those wrinkles. So you have equal pressure pounds per inch of your leg and you have the best effect from your compression stocking. Not inexpensive, very effective. 
and you can control the angle of this as well. So say I put my foot down and it's not working, I can tip it down, I can tip it up. You really do have a lot of control with this. It's almost impossible to put the sock on crooked because it's one rigid piece that pulls up entirely uniformly so you don't have to worry about with the former sock aids which rope you're pulling. And it's almost difficult to pull this up too quickly as well because the, um, you'll see with a real compression stocking, it's, it's a bit of a barrier. So you're just pulling up as quickly as that sock will let you pull up. So that's all I wanted to say this week about compression stocking sock aids. Thank you very much for joining me and for tuning in. I am going to be finishing up the ebook soon on compression stockings and it'll be available on Amazon. That book is going to be the first OT Mara series, volume one, compression stockings. It's going to be free because again, I need a lot of feedback. Next week is going to be the very last weekly series on sock aids and it's just going to be DIY. If you are really on a budget or you really like the idea of repurposing, recycling, reusing, which does appeal to me as well, you can make your own DIY sock aids, not for compression stockings, for standard socks and um, I'll, I'll walk you through that process. After that Saturday, we're gonna be starting on something entirely new, hip kits. So hip kits are something that if you've had hip surgery, you may have garnered that from the name, you will, uh, used to be provided with, now they encourage you to buy, um, sometimes at the bedside after surgery, a hip kit which has a, usually has a socking aid, usually it's a hard plastic, has a long handle sponge, a long handle shoe horn, a dressing stick, and a really good one will also have a reacher and really good one will have elastic shoelaces. So I will purchase one of those and we will spend probably one or two weeks going through the rest of the items because the rest of the item doesn't take as much skill to use. You know, long handle sponge is pretty self-explanatory. Shoe horn, I just have a few little tips to, to show you a technique especially to not break hip precautions that I've come up with in the past. Discussing the difference between a sock, uh, between a reacher or grabber and a dressing stick, that might take a little bit longer. And elastic shoelaces, I'll just show you once and you will get it. So that may be one week, that may be two weeks, I'm not really sure yet. I don't want these videos to go more than a half hour because I know giving me a half hour is very generous on your part. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please post them either in the comment section below or I will post my email address, marnab243 at yahoo.com and I can answer any particulars about sock aids. Again, not about you, but about sock aids. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.